Thank you. Hello. Um, I'm Milena. I'm originally from Serbia, but now I work uh, in the UK, in European Centre for Medium Range Weather Forecast, and I will uh, present our efforts to make our data, as you can could see yesterday in Juliet Talks, our data is somewhat complicated uh, for users that are outside of meteorological community, so I will present our efforts to bridge this gap. Uh, so we are European uh, Centre for Medium Range Weather Forecast, we are based in Reading, uh, we are established in the 70s and since 1979 we are producing a uh, weather forecast. We, in we are inter international organization with uh, 34 member and cooperating states and we have around 350 staff members and growing. We are both operational service and research center and we uh, operate two Copernicus services, uh, Copernicus um, Climate Change Service and Copernicus Atmospheric Mod uh, Monitoring Service. Uh, we are now in the UK, but we are moving our uh, data center to Bologna next year. So we will be in two countries. Um, our operational um, activities uh, are uh, twice, twice a day we produce uh, high resolution and ensemble weather forecast. And uh, another twice a day we produce uh, global model that is, uh, wh which data is used as um, entry for uh, our member states' regional models on high resolution. We produced uh, hundreds of terabytes of data, and we also have this data available as web maps, as hundred uh, in hundreds of uh, thousands of web maps updated twice a day, and we uh, disseminate all our data uh, in real time twice a day to 200 destinations worldwide. We are also producing everyday research data. It is also hundreds, hundreds of experiments from research at our center and in our member states. And we are also producing reforecast and climate reanalysis. It all adds up to uh, our big uh, meteorological archive, which is now over 300 petabytes of data and uh, 250 petabytes added every day. All of this doesn't make our data very um, easy to access, even though we do have very sophisticated dissemination system that is disseminating all these terabytes of data to our users uh, twice a day. We have web services. Our data are available through uh, our uh, web portal and through WMS. Uh, uh, Non-users can actually uh, process all of our data and lots of our ensemble data sits unused because it's a lot to download and then to process. So uh, we are looking into better ways to um, uh, bridge this gap between users and data, uh, which presents our first challenge. How do we actually get more users and more non-meteorological users to use our data. Another challenge that we have is that users want to get to know our data, they want to visualize their data, they want to easily share results of their meteorological work, uh, to interactively work with our data, but they don't want to spend a lot of time learning another new visualization library that works very well with meteorological data. Uh, a lot, uh, to spend a lot of time defining uh, colors for each and every meteorological parameter, and we have over 200, 200 of them, which leads us to uh, then having something like this for every single parameter or something like this. When you just visualize, you get every, everything is the same. So another challenge is how to make this visualization process of so many meteorological parameters easier for the users. We can help because we have already uh, over 30 years of experience of working with meteorological data, visualizing meteorological data. We have our in-house uh, software that is uh, now even open source. Uh, we have Magix that is plotting library. It is using our own also open source EC code library to decode meteorological data. And uh, for example, Proj4 for uh, Projections. On top of Magic sits Matthew, which is a meteorological workstation to 
visualize and process meteorological data. And also we have easy charts, which is web portal to, for, for forecasters to actually use meteorological data. We want to use our experience with all of this to offer automatic styling, to offer uh, easier work with meteorological data with uh, Jupyter notebooks, and to offer uh, some kind of light WMS service that will make uh, users work with our data much more easy, e easier. So we start mid with Magix. Magix is uh, over 30 year old, year old uh, plotting library. Uh, it, is, it knows our data very well, but to actually define how, how you visualize your data, you need a lot of parameters. Over the years, Magix, for, for just plotting, it has over 100 parameters that you need to know in order to set your visualization well. But users don't want that. Users just want, I give you this parameter and tell you, do, give me automatic settings and I want to see how it looks like. So uh, we did a little project. Uh, project we, have, we had over 250 parameters already visualized in uh, easy charts. And we wanted all of these uh, styles uh, somehow in, uh, imported into Magix to have um, it available for users on demand. Uh, so it was our basis. Uh, if you want to know more about easy charts, there will be a presentation at 11 in the Rhapsodia ballroom. Uh, so these, these parameters and these styles are very well known by our member states, our forecasters, and mo a lot of time they, they want, okay, I have your data, I want to see it as I see it on easy charts. I don't want to invent, I don't want to go through some code and uh, de uh, define colors for every single parameter. So what we did, we, we, um, uh, uh, Magix already knows meteorological data and it uh, reads metadata and then we created rules for, for each parameter uh, that is recognized. Okay, we have this parameter, apply this style to this, this uh, parameter and then automatically it um, applies the style. Um, GRIB is our meteorological uh, format, but uh, NetCDF is another more widely used uh, format, and we want uh, to have, um, we, we implemented also support for uh, NetCDF, but X-Ray is um, library that is now uh, most more and more uh, present and it it has a uh, support for both grip and both netcdf so we want also to have support the same support that we have for grip and netcdf we want to, to have it for x-ray because that's the future so um, uh, all this styling is used in our uh, what we call skinny wms so it's a lightweight wms uh, service. So what it does, it scan. Uh, if you have a directory with your uh, meteorological data, it uh, and you don't know how to work with this meteorological data, it scan. You you st uh, it scans the directory, uh, picks up metadata, uh, and then tells Magix, okay, you have this metadata. Please find me the style and get me the map. So uh, this service returns three functions. You get a, it builds small get capabilities, get map and get a legend. So you can use these get, get capabilities to any uh, WMS uh, client. But it also has starts a small uh, flask server, flask server. And if you want to just inspect your data, you can put this uh, local host uh, uh, link in your browser, and you will get your data visualized right there. Uh, so this is just an embryonic work. It's it is just in alpha phase started. So we need there's a, uh, even though we've imported all the uh, recognized parameters, uh, have it all of their styles. There's a lot more to to do. We need, we want to add more styles and support for more for time steps and for more uh, parameters and the, uh, support improved support for for projection. 
How to use it? Well, you just download it with PIP or Conda and then start with skinny WMS and give it part to path to your data and then put the link in your browser or put it in your uh, WMS client and you have your all of your data in this directory visualized to inspection. What does it have to do with cloud? So uh, it, gives us, it brings us back to our first challenge. Uh, we have all this data, we disseminate it, but it, uh, for, for non med service users, it can be challenging just to download this data and then to process it. So what we want to do is we want to bring the data, uh, the users to the data, not the data to the users. And we also want to bring uh, users to the processing and the data. Uh, be, because of this reas uh, reason, ECMWF uh, is joining um, another couple of uh, private companies, universities, and research centers in Hidalgo project, uh, which is a European um, Horizon 2020 project that uh, uh, has a, a vision of solving some of the global challenges by uniting sci scientists from different fields working together on solving uh, some of world ch uh, challenges. The challenges that we are working on are uh, simulation of migration of um, refugees, uh, simulation of uh, air pollution on city level, and uh, social uh, simulation of messages on social networks. ECMWF is involved in the first two uh, simulations because they want to use our data but they, they don't have absolutely any experience in using meteorological data. So we are helping them uh, working with our data and pr uh, getting to know uh, with it and um, uh, processing it. How do we see Hidalgo? So we have this um, like a building a workflow from uh, HPC through cloud, through visualization service to end user. So end user doesn't know anything about um, HPC or how to work meteorological data. They just want to run their, their maybe NGO who is, uh, wants to see where refugees will move in the next, in the future. And they, they just start uh, uh, working in Hidalgo pro project. They uh, run the simulation and everything is um, done through orchestrator behind the scene. Uh, so uh, we are using the experience in this project to move from this, um, how it's done today. So we have, we run our model, we have fields in the database and then we either push it to the user or have a user pull it from the archive. Well, what we want is uh, to have both users and service uh, together and, uh, and uh, users together in the cloud so data doesn't leave our center. If the user just wants uh, want data and um, it, uh, they, have, they will have um, data and software on the, on the cloud, they will, uh, if it's an um, advanced user who wants to run their model and simulation, they will have our infrastructure to, to run their, uh, their simulation, but already they will have data too, so they don't have to move any data. We are partnering with uh, UMETSAT together because our data is uh, connected, we have the same users, and both of our data is um, um, too, too, too big to, to actually move it and process in them together. So we, we already have some experience with um, building a cloud. So we, were invo we are involved uh, through Copernicus to building uh, Copernicus Climate Data Store, which is some, something similar, but with all the data open. So it has um, uh, climate data, climate reanalysis, also some satellite data and um, river di discharge data. And uh, users can download data and process it, but they can also down, uh, process it uh, using um, CDS toolbox, and they can do build a, their application or process the data directly on Copernicus Cloud. And some of the applications are already using our uh, small skinny WMS to visualize their um, uh, results of their work. Uh, one of uh, this, this image is showing the f one of the first applications that is, that is actually 
so they, they are building an application for uh, climate sustainabil uh, sustainability for tourism, and they're calculating touristic indices and uh, visualize it using uh, Skinny WMS and Magix. Uh, so uh, bring, uh, bringing the user and the, the data uh, together and enabling e uh, easy visualization are very important uh, ways of getting more users outside of our little meteorological community and uh, getting our data used more. So we, we uh, have plans to create more rules for automatic styling to uh, uh, enable users to create their, their own uh, styles to add, uh, to do more work on this skinny WMS and add the time component and to improve actually magics by using it in um, of data portals, CDS toolbox, and more uh, Horizon 2020 projects. Uh, so we are building a cloud, federated cloud together with UMATSAT to facilitate this. And then uh, we started this year a um, two-year pilot study uh, that will have uh, our member states having their applications on this cloud and also Horizon 2020 applications working on this cloud. And then we want to integrate this skinny WMS on the cloud through Jupyter and IPA leaflet, so it's used by even more, even bigger community. So this is uh, um, uh, enabled by this uh, Horizon 2020 project. And we also have, um, we are also hiring. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So, questions. There's many people, so I expect many questions. I was just wondering, this library that you have, this, uh, or this lightweight server, yes. is it uh, only tailored for this use case, or it can be used in other uh, circumstances as well? I mean, it uh, it reads uh, Grib and NetCDF data, which is meteorological data. But uh, it I, it it could be adjusted. Uh, it could be um, built, uh, extended to support anything else, and be build a WMS. I have a quick question while well, others think. is uh, I don't work with uh, meteorological data, but I was contacted by another European project called Primavera. I don't know if you heard. Did, do, do you have any contacts with them? Maybe I'm co completely wrong and I don't... It's, a, it's still they work on meteorological data and they do some predictions. We, we work on, on, on several uh, European projects, but I think we, we co cooperate. We do? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so you know them as well. Yes. Okay, thanks. Uh, other questions? Going once. Last chance. Okay. Thank you. And uh, then we just wait for the next speaker. Thank you very much. <laughs>